What's on YouTube? It's Pete DT coming at you with another division video. Today, agents, I bring you my first ever support build and my first ever build based on electronics and skill power. So be prepared. This video will be a little bit longer than normal, but trust me, guys, it is totally worth waiting until the end. So first, let's talk about the set I'm running. I'm sure that if you're watching this, you already know it's a tactician slash firecrest build but to be a bit more specific it's a three and three build now the reason for running a three and three as a support build is very interesting so let's talk a little bit about it okay the three piece tacticians build gives me a two set bonus of plus 10 percent skill haste and a three set bonus of plus 10 percent skill power the two and three piece bonus for the Firecrest set gives me plus three incendiary grenade capacity and it now boasts a very nice plus 50% flame turret range and plus 50% flame turret duration. Now, you might be asking, Pete, why do I want to run a Firecrest build as a support build? And guys, I am going to tell you. So, first up, let's look at the basics of the Firecrest build. Designed to work with a flame turret and all of the incendiary consumables, this set offers amazing crowd control. When specced into electronics and skill power, it is possible to hit over 10,000 damage from a flame turret and a 500,000 turret health. These are without a doubt very, very high numbers to hit and damage from a flame turret are indeed noticeable. As you will see in the background footage, my turret can almost totally deplete an elite NPC's armour and health bar without any worries. It can stun lock multiple enemies at a time and now that the firecrest bonuses have been tweaked the set bonuses become a completely viable option in my opinion when building a setup of any kind. And when I mean any kind guys I mean a DPS build, a tank build or a skill build. So we've spoken a little bit about the firecrest part of the build now let's talk a little bit about the need for the three piece tacticians. So the plus 10% skill power is a much needed bonus when building a support role so that you can hit the 225 to 250,000 skill power cap that makes a skill power build so powerful in the first place. The 10% skill haste means that you can get your skills back quick enough that when you have used them they are back and ready to use again before the first runs out. Combined together then, these two builds make one very powerful support build that has unlimited crowd control potential and the ability to run a second skill to amazing effect. Now then, what do you run alongside this? Because for a long time now, I've heard people talking about the fact support builds are dead and or in a very sorry state. That, however, is totally not true. You now just have to be a little bit more creative and specced to make the most out of your build. So, let's look at some of the great options available to you when looking at a support skill build. First, we have Support Station. With a personal skill power of 225,000, I can have a very useful Support Station. Equipped with the Life Support mod, not only do I have an 8,671 health point per second regeneration, I also get to keep the thing active for almost a minute. Now, in total, with my personal build, my Support Station has 115,000 health and a cooldown of just 16.2 seconds. This means I can have one active pretty much at all times. Now, the thing with any selected skill now is the ability to add performance mods that directly increase the stats of equipped skills. So, used correctly, focus in two performance mods on your gear to one skill and two to the other you can have pretty much a very well rounded set when it comes to in the increased stats from performance mods looking at one more viable option to run now then and this is smart cover where smart cover took a major nerf in recent updates it is without a doubt still a viable option 
Looking at using Smart Cover with the Recharger mod active, you can look at adding in the region of about 32% team stats such as damage resilience, weapon stability and accuracy. Now, compared to the 9% base value, that's a hell of an increase, right? Looking at my personal stats as an example then, when using Smart Cover, I can take my toughness from about 310,000 to 457,000. That really is a nice increase, right? And it is definitely, definitely noticeable. Now, why are things such as Smart Cover and Support Station aren't the two only viable options to run? Things like self heals, pulse, seeker mines can all be utilized in a skill build very, very effectively. The smart cover, the support station, and the pulse are without a doubt definitely the most usable when it comes to supporting your team. So, definitely, guys, if you plan on running a skill build, you definitely want to be looking at one of those three skills, in my opinion. Overall guys, the day of support builds and skill builds are far from dead. They just now require a lot more attention to make a viable option. Now, I have to take my hat off to Orangi Eero Sage because this build is the accumulation of weeks and weeks worth of testing, fine tuning and mid-maxing. Now, the next big question guys is, did I enjoy using and playing with my first ever support build? And I was quite surprised to answer yes yes i enjoyed it right this build is a tremendous amount of fun and i would definitely recommend to you skill build guys checking this out and playing with it for yourselves the next question will it replace my main alpha bridge dps set and sadly the answer to this is no while I love this set and it is indeed a great amount of fun to run, I'm really not a fan of the support build playstyle, so I will continue to main my DPS build in the future. But, that being spec, guys, you can expect a full breakdown later on this week on my FireQuest Tactician setup as a build guide, so that for those of you who want to try this out, you will have an in-detailed guide on how to roll the gear, how to roll your talents, your abilities, your stats and things like that so that you can mid max a build of this style in your own fashion and that guys is going to wrap up this video obviously as i'm sure you're aware this is only part one part two will be my build guide as soon as i have finished recording this i will go and record that one so you can probably expect it up about 24 hours after you watch this episode but guys massive massive hats off shout out to sage couldn't have put this video together without him. I had a tremendous amount of fun trying this out. I do honestly see why people like skill builds and why we see so many of them about. If you like the video, guys, smash that thumbs up button. Share the video around, you know, all that normal jazz. Let me know any comments you have in the section down below. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. There's plenty more Division videos coming your way. And as always, agents, thank you very much for watching. Until the next video, I'll catch you all soon.